Hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Sonic Yoda of Sega Driven here, and um, today I've decided to get in on some of this showing off my game collection action that I see quite a lot over YouTube. Um, so I have a lot of games, as you can see around. Um, so I've decided to not throw loads and loads of games in your face straight off with like a, you know half an hour video because it's going to take a while to cover all this sort of stuff. So I've decided to cover it by uh, by console. So yeah, so we're going to start off with Mega Drive today, and so yeah, I'll get them all out and stack them up, and we'll have a little look and delve into what we've got. So. Dun, 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 dun. Right, okay, so here is the collection as it currently stands. I've done a quick count, and apparently I have 148 games. Um, some I do have a few times, uh, duplicates of, you know, different regions and things like that. So uh, there is a little bit of a, you know, crossover with some things, but in total, including duplicates, 148 games. Some of them are unboxed, as you can see. I've got cartridges here. But, um, yeah, I like to collect games not because I want them because they're rare, I like to play games, so I'm not going to be bothered about um, not owning a game if it doesn't have a box or an instruction manual or anything like that. It doesn't bother me. If I want to play it, I'm going to buy it regardless. So, um, yes, I suppose we should delve into this a little bit closer. Um, so, yeah, we'll have a little chat about some of the games I really enjoy or am very proud of owning. So, yes, let's have a little look. So first up we have uh, Jainoog, as I've recently discovered it's pronounced, not Gainoog. Um, this is one of my absolute favourite games of all time. It is a horizontal shooter um, where you play as, well, some sort of angel type Hercules bloke. And um, yeah, you basically sh shoot uh, anything that moves. Lots of weirdness in this game, uh, generally, and just, you know, just very unique art style. And really, really good game. Uh, quite tough, actually, um, but certainly worth picking up if you can get it. So here's another one of my absolute favourite games of all time. This is Cars of Evolution, starring Mickey Mouse. Um, absolutely one of the best platforms ever made, in my opinion. Um, very colourful, very unique. Every stage has its own clever little gimmicks and things. Um, just really, really worth owning and a really great Disney game. Um, very common. Pick it up. Uh, it's so cheap to get and you know boxed or anything it doesn't it doesn't particularly matter it's well worth playing so yeah give that one a shot so this is the game of the movie alien 3 so um yeah really really good fun um very tough very interesting just um really well done uh the levels play out with you rescuing a set of hostages and you can't cannot leave until you found them all um which can be a little bit irritating but i like it it it, it makes you explore the stages um generally see what everything you know what each stage has to offer and um just really good fun a uh, very very good game and well worth checking out so earthworm gym um not a lot that needs to be really said about this to be honest with you absolutely one of the best platformers of all time uh run and gun just really really good fun absolutely mad aesthetic um lots of strange cartoony humor and just weirdness um just really really good fun massively unique nothing has ever been close to it yeah, uh, in, in just you know style, and it's just just a great, great game. Um, I absolutely love it to bits. I've played it so many times. Um, if you don't own it, then you owe it to yourself to play it. It's just great. Right now, this was a bit of a bizarre little find. Uh, so this is Glay Lancer, uh, which only actually received a Japanese release. But as you can see, this has European PAL style um, artwork. Absolutely brilliant two D side scrolling shooter. Uh, really, really good fun. Uh, lots of uh, variety, just a great game. But like I said, this is a Japanese-only game, so what is going on here? Uh, this turns out to be quite a very, very clever uh, little reproduction using a ROM hack that is completely translated into English. Um, and I'm pretty sure this sort of thing is illegal. And uh, yes, just, just a brilliant shooter. So we're going to have to touch base on these games at some point in this video, so we might as well get it out of the way now. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog. I absolutely love this series. Um, it seems to get a lot of flack nowadays. People don't seem to think it's as good as some other platformers, mainly Mario. Um, but I just think they're solid. Uh, really, really good games. Really cool. Lot of attitude. Just a great character. Uh, loads and loads of fun. Lots of variety. They added something unique and made it work in every sing single game. I mean, there are your Sonic Spinballs and your Sonic 3Ds. But... 
um, you know, they're just there's there's something basic about them that really works in their own way. So uh, yeah, let's have a little bit of a closer look. So as you can see over here, there's a big signature all over this. Uh, that's actually Yuji Naka's autograph, which I got at Summer of Sonic 2011. Um, very big thanks to my mate Sven Jocelyn for uh, allowing me to speak to the man and get that sort of thing done. Um, so yeah, that's um, probably worth a considerable amount more now. Um, so yeah, here's it's the series, Sonic 1, 2, 3, uh, compilation. Right, okay, now we've got some uh, foreign variants. Asian version of Sonic 2, Japanese version of Sonic 3, and Asian version of Sonic Spinball. And then loose, we've also got Japanese version of Sonic 1, Japanese version of Sonic Spinball, and Japanese version of Sonic 2. Um, as far as I can tell, there is nothing different between them and the rest of them. I should probably show you how I play my imports, so let's get onto that now. So here is my modded uh, Mark 1 Mega Drive. It's actually a Japanese one, but uh, someone has been very kind enough to add a dip switch for both uh, 50 and 60 hertz and Japanese or English or USA. So yeah, that's your PAL and NTSC. You basically flick the switches to be wherever you need it to be. Um, and that allows you to play anything from any region, which is very, very nice. Uh, it also comes in quite handy with the 32X, which allows me to boot um, a 32X from any region as well as the games from any region. And uh, yeah, so um, it opens up a wealth of, um, of just gaming that you <laughs> from any region you want um, and is great for imports like I say. Um, if you don't have uh, access to mod or anything like this um, there are tutorials to do it but um, it, it obviously requires you to do a lot of uh, soldering work and whatnot um, and this was actually bought um, already modded on eBay so um, I recommend a converter cartridge which I can show you now. So this is a uh, Japanese NTSC to PAL game adapter. Japanese games go in the top, um, and then, yeah, the whole thing then goes straight into your Mega Drive. Um, and that can obviously converts it from NTSC to PAL. So sometimes it can slow the sound down, uh, mainly the music, um, but that's not a massive issue. The game still runs at full speed, and obviously you don't get to miss out on anything that was released exclusively in Japan. Now, my interest in sports games is pretty low, so uh, this is quite a, you know, rarity for me. But this game, Striker, is obviously a football game. A football game, you Americans. No, it's not bloody soccer. It's football. Um, and it is absolutely fantastic. A really, really good game. Um, just really approachable and lots of customization options, which I absolutely love. It has a save feature, which allows you to customise your teams and put their own... Um, give them your own strips, give them your own names and things, and it's just really, really good fun. And I, I, I honestly prefer it to things like Sensible Soccer. I just think it's a great, great football game. There was a sequel actually that followed up on the Saturn. I think it's Striker '96, but um, actually misses a f quite a few of the features that this has. So uh, honestly, if you have any interest in football and not soccer, then uh, yeah, definitely go for Striker. So here we have Ristar, which is just one of the best platformers of all time. Uh, the gimmick with this is that his arm stretch, which allow you to grab things from a distance and hold on to uh, birds and ropes and things, and just yeah, there's lots of nice little gimmicks that that work around the whole stretchy arm mechanic, and it's just a great, great game. Um, the music is fantastic. Some one of my best games, one of the best game soundtracks of all time, as far as I'm concerned, um, and I'd really love to see you know, more remixes because this is it's just oh, I love the way it sounds. And the way it looks, it's really, really colourful. Each game is very, very uniquely designed and it just pops and really stands out. Just a great game and really well worth hunting down. So here we have Pulse Man. Now this is very rare and uh, quite expensive to find. I actually picked this up on a holiday in Tokyo for about £30, which is very, very cheap, especially boxed with instructions. And it's just a brilliant, brilliant game. It's, I think, as far as I'm aware, it's the first game by Game Freak, who are the people that later went on to develop Pokemon. And there's lots of references to Horseman in Pokemon games. But yeah, it, it's um, very, very similar to Mega Man in its style. Lots of uh, running and jumping and shooting. And just very, very good fun. Uh, very, very good. Uh, it's very difficult, I've got to say. That's a very, that's quite a strong... 
um, put off for a lot of people. It can be quite a hard game, but if you're willing to put in the time, you get a very, very rewarding experience. Right, finally, I want to talk Shadow of the Beast with you all, because I have an absolute love for this game and its sequel, and a lot of people shrug it off and think it's a bit naff, over overly difficult, and just, you know, uninspiring. But there's something about it that really, really um, ticks with me. Uh, so this is the PAL version um, of the first game, which is very, very difficult. Um, and the sound runs ridiculously fast, if I remember correctly, which is not usually the, the way things work with PAL games. It's usually slower. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's quite faithful to the Amiga original, which it's ported from. Um, but... A little bit unforgiving, which is why we come to the Japanese version, which corrects those sort of things. Uh, they redid the sprite as well, which is quite nice. Um, and yeah, the music runs at the correct speed, and it's a lot easier in regards to um, there is a difficulty setting. I think you can up your health as well, which just makes it a little bit more forgiving and allows you to enjoy it a little bit better. But the, the main thing I love about this game is its soundtrack by David Whitaker is just fantastic. One of my, uh, probably my favourite game soundtrack of all time. I've actually got it on CD as well, thanks to the awesome Immortal Project, who rearranged it in the studio. And it just, oh, it sounds so good. Such a great game. And the visuals are very sort of morbid and uh, fantasy based. And just, yeah, there's nothing, nothing looks like it. I love it. It's a break. It's a great game. The sequel is um, good in its own right, but it's different, <laughs> really. It's, yeah, so um, it's still a, a platformer, run and jump action game sort of thing, but there's a lot more puzzles involved, and it doesn't really let on what you're supposed to be doing an awful lot of the time. So without a game, F game fact or game FAQ or, you know, whatever, a walkthrough, um, this can be an incredibly difficult game. Um, there is a port on the Mega CD, which is a lot rarer, but a lot better, and it features um, a lot of uh, FMV cutscenes, which are actually really, really well done, um, and I prefer that one over this, and it's actually, you know, generally a little bit beatable, <laughs> whereas this can be an absolute nightmare. Um, but yes, uh, I absolutely love these games, and... Um, the soundtrack alone is totally worth checking them out. I would go for the Japanese version if you can. Uh, yeah, great, great games. So that's your lot for this episode. I uh, um, hope that was interesting. <laughs> um, I am essentially showing off, but you know, everybody else does it, so why can't I? <laughs>